I had been looking forward to the Adirondacks for quite some time, but still wasn't sure what to expect. It wasn't long on 9 North before I knew it was going to be a good fit. Lush and mountainous, but very little population. Just scattered small towns and lakes everywhere. As well as the All Sable River, which parallels parts of 9 and 86 most of the way. I debated on stringing up my hammock between those two trees for the night. I've been having mixed success with camping apps, so I'm going to try and mention which I use for each location. This time it was Free Roam that came through. It's a good one, but it's not available on some of the app stores. You may have to Google how to download it. There I found a U.S. Forest Service area just south of Lake Placid. Not much more than a parking spot, but great location and access to a hiking trail. First I hop on the dirt bike to go take a look around, check out some of the quaint touristy towns. Then look on Google Maps to take me up a mountain and head towards the only option. I wind up at Whiteface Mountain. I take a look around for a minute and then realize that years and years ago I saw a piece about this on TV. I remember thinking how cool it was. So I pony up the 20 bucks for the five mile ride up 2,300 feet to a summit of 4,867 feet. Which doesn't sound that high, but the views are staggering. I'm going to learn you something. The road's called Veterans Memorial Highway. The project began in 1931 and employed scores of workers during the Great Depression. It took four years and cost $1.25 million. And then the castle and the summit house were open three years after that. Alright, we're headed up the summit. I decided to coast back down. Bravo!
I dodge some rain in a little gazebo and then continue exploring. One of the Olympic areas is supposed to have some mountain bike trails, but there are none to be found. First real Adirondack hike. It's only 2.2 miles and I believe an 800 ish foot drop on the way out. So obviously, climbing back. Evidently, some hikers earlier, which would be the Benefit to get my ass up early. Saw a moose in the pond. That would be cool. The air quality is much better today. I guess it's just different winds or whatever, but... The sun came out yesterday morning for a little bit, but I mean, you could barely even see shadows. But today... Pretty blue up there. It's almost noon. Tips are still. Let's see, upper 60s. I don't wonder if I entered from the opposite side because I've been going uphill uh, for the most part since I got to the pond, but I don't really care either way. Anyway, beautiful day, carrying on. Oh, and poles were a uh, good choice to bring for sure. Probably the case uh, if you're hiking the Adirondacks anywhere, I would imagine. So thanks, Dave Schmidt. and they said that the official start is at the other end so that's why we are climbing see this again like looks like the trail goes over there but you can only see so far Ooh. and the <laughs> you hear is me trying to get these fucking nets away from me which have to be the most whoop, annoying uh, insect in the world. All right, so see, now you gotta look back over that way. Pretty cool. Again, trail. So go back this way. <laughs> it's wild. Yeah. Creek bed, I guess. <laughs>
know it's a the uh, trail from camp to the summit might be considered more of a like a backcountry type trail I'm guessing this is coming up to the overlook I always wonder, like when I'm at in an area like this, beautiful by the way, um, by myself it seems like perfect area for all kinds of wildlife. But like today I haven't seen anything but frogs and heard birds. But then I sit there and wonder like if you could quarantine off like one acre, or five acres, actually just like say one acre right here. What all is living there right now? And I just don't see it. Service road. And this will. And. Back home. After about six hours. Take the next day to recoup at the Pine Canopied campsite just across the road. But these Adirondack mosquitoes are no joke. I popped into Lake Saranac for Wi-Fi but no dice. So I point west as the sun begins descending and I stop at Tupper Lake along the way. It's beautiful. but I end up in Long Lake listening to live music Lakeside for a bit before crashing at the library with Wi-Fi for the night. I stopped by Blue Lake Diner in the morning for the unhealthiest breakfast I could find and then head towards Lake Durant. Campendium comes through this time, Friday morning, and sure enough, there's one spot available right on the lake. I get situated as quick as possible and head out for a paddle. firewood search for my stay. I score a big dead tree and set about chopping it up. For a while. Quite a 
quite a while. The next day I decree a veg day just to enjoy my amazing campsite. I do some editing, but mostly just chilling. Skeeter in my house, I'm about to kill it. There's a skeeter in my house, I'm about to kill it. There's a skeeter in my house. And I just got rid of a mouse. There's a skeeter in my house, I'm about to kill it. The following day I woke up to a rainy morning, but it wasn't long before the showers blew off and left blue skies and puffy white clouds. It was still breezy, I get the feeling it always is, but the lake was much calmer so I decided to paddle to the opposite end, a nature sanctuary where only paddle boats can go. It's a magical little place. I spent most of my time floating, absorbing, and feeling grateful for these kinds of opportunities. Six miles, four hours, and much relaxing later, I finally paddled back into camp. Some places you just seem to connect with more than others. The Adirondacks are right up there at the top of the list for me. Just the right amount of wilderness, mountains, lakes, small towns, and adventure. Who knew after my surprising dislike for New York City that upstate New York would resonate with me so much. I hope I was able to share it with you to some degree. See you next time, and until then, peace out.